Hey everyone, it's Strange Michael. I hope you're doing well today. I have a review here for a movie that everybody's talking about everywhere I go, whether it be on YouTube, in the horror community, reviewers and stuff I watch, whether it be on Reddit. I'm seeing this thing everywhere, and apparently it's built up even a bigger reputation according to the comments on this video. Not my video, but the video of this movie I'm talking about because it was released as a YouTube video for free to watch on YouTube. Um, Apparently, it's building up a big thing on TikTok, reputation-wise. I don't have TikTok. I fucking hate TikTok. But this movie seemed pretty interesting. It's a found footage movie. It's just like an hour and two minutes long. And uh, it's from a team of comedians who have kind of dabbled into some horror in a very Jordan Peele way. This film is called Milk and Cereal, but not cereal. No, no, no. Not like Lucky Charms. Cereal is in a I've killed a bunch of people type of cereal. Um, this is directed, written, and starred in by a guy named Curry Barker, who I just looked up on IMDb. I know it looked like I knew his name, but I didn't know his name. Never heard of the guy. But apparently he's getting a huge... Uh, a bunch of deals now, now that he released this movie, and I guess it was released within the last few weeks or so, I don't really know. But this was pretty cool for what it was. I don't want to tell you too much. As I describe the movie, it might sound a little generic for a found footage movie. You've probably seen some things kind of like this in the found footage subgenre of horror and thriller that I love, because I'm a huge fan of found footage. This is not going to convert you, but I think that just in general, I think this movie is interesting enough and surprising enough that I think most people would really like it for what it is. It's not my favorite movie of the year or anything like that, but pretty cool for what it was. And I do think it was pretty cool that they released this free to watch and not some $1.99 rental on Prime Video. No, if you really, as a young filmmaker, want to get out there and make some money, do things like this. Release it at first kind of in a, in a trustful manner with YouTube and the internet and hoping that they'll actually take the time to watch your shit. And uh, this is a great example of one that actually pulled it off and is doing fairly well, but it hasn't even hit a million views yet, which really kind of surprised me, but it's worth a watch. Anyway, Milk and Cereal, what is it about? Well, basically, there are two guys, kind of a group of people, but really two main guys named Milk, who is our main character, the guy who wrote, directed, and starred in the movie, Curry Barker's character, and another guy named Seven, who's basically his best friend and roommate. And they're like a prankster duo on the internet, and they have a lot of fame, and uh, just, <laughs> they have their own reputation online for doing that, kind of like in real life. And their pranks can sometimes go a bit far, uh, to the point that they could have fake stages of, you know, kidnapping and that kind of thing. And recently, Milk uh, had a birthday. <laughs> and of course, this being found footage, we watched this event happen as Seven, the roommate, uh, pulls a big prank on Milk that goes horribly wrong. And uh, after that joke <laughs> that kind of went wrong, a weirdo neighbor, uh, a kind of creepier, he's supposed to be like 70 years old, but this guy couldn't be more than like 45, 55, somewhere in there. Uh, the guy comes into the apartment without being invited during the birthday party and just kind of wanders around, doesn't really say much, and then he just leaves. And that kind of spirals into a uh, more horrific situation, but not in a way that you would think as a found footage thriller horror movie, stalker movie, uh, dipping its toes into slasher, but with literally no blood, which was cool, you know, in its own way, I gotta say. Um, but there are some big things here. When I talk about it being a very surprising film, a very engaging movie, I don't think you understand how much changes about 20 minutes into this hour-long movie. Something happens, almost in a rewind fashion, uh, almost like a, a movie cheating situation, that recontextualizes everything. And it made it way more interesting than the movie could have been if it had just been your run-of-the-mill generic film. And I think that's where a lot of people are getting hooked onto this movie, like a fish at a, at a, at a lake, a pond. I don't know where I was going with the analogy. But anyway, uh, <laughs> it was a pretty cool change-up, if you will. I've seen something similar to this before. I cannot remember and recall exactly where I've seen this twist happen. But it was pretty cool for what it was doing. Uh, I love the poster of the film. If you haven't seen it before, hopefully you saw it in my thumbnail with a guy with one of those Walmart plastic masks that you can see through. It's pretty eerie. I've seen it in other things like Alice, Sweet Alice, I think is the title of that old classic. It was a pretty good movie, by the way. 
But uh, this is the first time I've seen it in recent years, used in a movie, <laughs> for low budget or otherwise. And uh, this being a low budget thriller, it's kind of cool. I kind of dug it for what it had to offer. I think everybody gives a good performance for what they have to do. There's one girl in here who's pretty convincing. I think her name is Naomi. She's not even in the movie a whole lot. She's a very pretty girl, very good actress for what she had to do in the movie. The big performance here is the main guy who directed, wrote it, and starred in it, Milk, that character. Um, personally, and this is nothing against him, I think he's a very talented young man. Apparently this whole project was more in his hands than his friend's hands. Um, I think his performance kind of varies. You know, one second I think he's genuinely creepy, genuinely creepy sometimes with how far his pranks can go. And even his friend Seven's pranks are a little too much for me. But there are other moments where I think it feels like Milk's performance is a, a little too much, just a tad bit too much. But outside of that, I think genuinely everybody was very good here. The cast was good. I don't even know if he's friends with all these other people, if they're in the, the, the comedy duo's other videos in real life. I don't know. But everybody did pretty good for what they had to do here. Uh, it's kind of horrific. Can you imagine if you've seen the movie being put in this situation? <laughs> I don't think I could live the rest of my life like this. Um, but yeah, it was pretty surprising for what it was. It's a movie that I even recommended to Rambo Raff for Life last night on his YouTube channel because I really want to see what his thoughts would be, even though he mainly does requests now, and the paid requests, and that's basically it. But I would love to hear everybody's comments down below, or new video responses or something, even though we don't do that anymore on YouTube, to hear what you all have to say about Milk and Cereal. Again, it's a very talked about movie, and uh, I don't want you to miss out on it, especially the fact that it's free right now. It's pretty cool for what it was. Um, I think a lot of people would like this, especially if you're a huge found footage fan. This has some stuff to offer for you. So, anyway, at, at the end of the day, if I had to rate Milk and Cereal on a five-star basis, I liked it a lot. I didn't love it, but I liked it a lot. I thought it was definitely worth my time. Flew by, man, that hour-long time. Uh, I would give it like a three out of five stars. I thought it was very cool. Had some really good twists in there. It felt more like improv acting than actual script writing from Curry Barker, but I still would say that I liked it. I thought it was very engaging for what it had to do, what it was trying to do. So with that being said, Milk and Cereal is definitely a recommendation for me. One of the better horror films to come out in 2024, which has been kind of a disappointing year for me. Um, I just reviewed two other films right before this called In a Violent Nature and Late Night with the Devil, and... Uh, both of those were massive disappointments to me compared to this, which this has a big re reputation and it's not a piece of shit like Skin of Marink, you know, from last year. Anyway, what did you think? Let me know down below. Thank you all for watching, guys. God bless you all. Catch you later and goodbye.